Welcome back to the kitchen table of Silver Surf Wax for Silver Surf Wax Sunday. And have I got an unboxing for you. I'm kind of excited about this. I purchased this over uh, uh, on, on uh, Cyber Weekend uh, uh, on uh, Black Friday. And uh, SD Bullion had one of these offers for Junk Silver for a lower um, premium. It was like $7.99 versus what has been mostly about around $11. So I just decided to make the purchase. I'm working on my quarters project and I gambled, guys. I made a gamble because the uh, the page that they had was indicating that you would get randomly either quarters or dimes. Now I'm looking for quarters because <laughs> I'm working on a quarters project, but I also have so many dimes that I could work on dimes too. But I decided since it was a little bit lower and spot price was lower back then, uh, as you may or may uh, not know, uh, spot prices jumped $2, over $2 in the last uh, couple, three trading days. So I ended up making this purchase. And uh, right now, if I made that same purchase, it would be about um, $200 more because I purchased a full 100 ounces of silver or $140 face. So this is a, a little bit larger purchase. Than I normally do, I'll do like a hundred dollars face when I have the money. Um, but in this case, I purchased a hundred and forty dollars face, and so let's get into it. Kind of excited is for for as uh, when it, usually when I have a larger purchase like this, it'll become in a bigger box or a reasonably sized box. But this one came in this tiny form factor. I was kind of worried whether this is every all the silver here so we're gonna jump into this and I'm gonna see if I can feel for any paperwork oh look at that it's a box within the box and look at that I got SD Bullion's uh, information and let's take that out of the way and yes that's the shipping info so perfect <clears throat> all right let's see if I can cut into this hopefully I'll show you like order number or something on here okay Negative. All right, so indeed, I did get, it looks like the rolls, and I, oh, I see some quarters. I see, did I luck out? Oh, I lucked out. I see some quarters. I'm so jazzed because in re, I really did want quarters, and after, but the quarters were so much more expensive. You know, I forget what it was. It was like $21 uh, face, which is just a ridiculous amount to pay for junk silver right now because... You know, you're talking like $30 an ounce of silver where you can pick up 100 ounce bars for $25 uh, an ounce. As a, and so junk silver has got, you know, got a huge premium on it. But uh, I did really want the quarters and I got the quarters. I'm so stoked. I thought there was a good chance that I would get the quarters because in the past when I've purchased junk silver, it seems like the quarters were always the lowest priced premium. It seems like if people want fractional silver, they're getting dimes. If they want the big, uh, easy to work with stuff, they're getting half dollars. And it seems like uh, quarters are the least desirable junk silver. At least that's what I've been noticing. Not sure if that's uh, if that's true. It's just my experience. And, uh, and that's kind of why I had done quarters last out of all the junk silver that I have, and I have quite a bit now. I Two years ago, I had virtually no junk silver, and now I have, uh, well, I have a decent, uh, fair amount. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, unwrapping these, uh, these, uh, these rolls and get into them and then see what we got. And uh, I won't do that all on camera with you. I'll, uh, I'll spare you that time, uh, and uh, we'll jump, jump back into it. All right, guys, coming right back at you. Okay, I just unwrapped all these guys, and I, I didn't do anything. I searched through them. I just kind of dumped them out. Here's all the uh, all the wrappers that uh, I just quickly undone. But uh, right off the bat, this has been a little bit of a different bunch because I just started picking off the top a bunch of... Uh, S, uh, uh, it looks like I got some standard Liberty course, Master Q, and some Barbers. Most of these are no date, but I noticed one Barber over here is probably the best Barber I've ever received. So I've, that's, I've never had a, ever, all the Barbers I've had have been completely slicked out. 
But this one, let's see if I can get that into focus. Um, this one is looking pretty decent. And uh, so I'm gonna kinda, because of the fact that I have so many of these, I mean, it looks like somebody put, they're all, these are mostly slicked out, no dates, which is kind of common from what I've been receiving when I accidentally receive um, SLQs or barbers. But I'm gonna go ahead and before I wash this, look at that, I'm just pulling them out of the pile here as, I've, as I'm just, uh, you know, sorting through, I'll, I'll notice some, um, you know, and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually do, I think, a little more of a thorough search because look at this, here's, here's another barber. That is pretty, uh, 1892 it looks like, that's pretty slicked out. But because of that, and then I can, maybe I can uh, treat the, <clears throat> these older coins just a little bit differently, a little bit nicer if I just, as I, as I, as I wash them. And I still will wash them, um, you know, uh, but I may not be as vigorous um, with the, uh, with the older ones just because it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun finding, look at that, I got another one, 1913, the, is that a D? Yeah, it's a 1913D. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick through these guys and we're gonna see out of this $140 um, space how many, I mean, that's a that's a good amount. That's like half a roll right there. So, um, all right, let me pick through these and I'll get right back with you. All right, I straightened everything out, flattened out and searched through all $140 face of these quarters just to see if I could find how many SLQs and barbers there are. And I ended up with um, thir almost $13 face, $12.75 in barbers and in quarters. So pretty cool over a whole roll in some of these more premium coins. Now I've, I've always kind of had a, a, a theory. Some of the reasons I've been searching through my dimes and then searching through these quarters and you know finding some of the more unique or older stuff and separating them out is because I had the fantasy of maybe uh, selling off. You know, look at the, I mean, look at this great barber, right? Look at that great, let's see if we can get that focused and see if we can put, put my hand in front of here. Look how dirty my fingers are just from that initial search. I'm very happy to clean these quarters up soon. But yeah, look at this, uh, look at that beautiful barber. That's a, that's a reasonably good shape barber. One of the best ones I've ever naturally come across, right? And, you know, I've got, I've got a couple of rolls of barbers, a couple of rolls of Standing Liberty Quarters. And these do go for some premium. A lot of these are going to be dateless and slicks, but some of them aren't. And so you can sell these, you know, for a little bit more than a, a regular roll of quarters, even though there's lost silver because these are so worn down. People will pay more for them. So the whole idea was, hey, if I found some good date dimes or I found some of these, uh, these kind of quarters, maybe sell it off and get more silver but man mama don't let your kids to grow up to be stackers because i'm telling you it's turned me into a little bit of a numismatist searching for these things and then uh, looking at rarities and variety dates you know key dates and and low mintages and double die obverse and all that good stuff has kind of put me into the collector mode and then the numismatic mode as opposed to just collecting the metal. I still call myself a, a metal stacker, but I got to admit the, uh, the siren song of, uh, of, uh, of uh, collecting rare stuff is starting to call me. And I'm fearful of the, the scenario where I start collecting slabbed coins and and uh, all key dates and, and trying to fill books in a way where I'm actually, uh, you know, a coin collector as opposed to a, a silver metal stacker. Because I, what I, my goal is, is to, is to have this stuff in bulk and to use it when it's needed. 
and instead of just being a collector. Uh, but that that's the risk I, I seemingly am running here. And uh, but I'm I'm fairly pleased. I gotta admit, fairly pleased to have gotten one at least more than one full roll out of these fourteen in uh, in Standard and Liberty quarters and Barber quarters. So fun stuff. I'm gonna go wash the, my hands and these quarters, and I'll get right back with you. All right, guys. Mrs. Uh, Silver Surf Wax was in the in the kitchen making us dinner, so I didn't have the opportunity to use the kitchen sink. But here I am, rinsing the coins as I as I often do, just with soap, soap and water, and uh, making uh, just uh, stirring them up. And I wanted to show you something because I couldn't believe it. This is the second rinse. The water got so dirty and nasty the first time I did it that I, you know, I just, I had to empty the whole thing, but I don't know if you can tell how dark and dank this water is, but uh, comparing it uh, against the, against the uh, white porcelain sink, it's just amazing. Uh, let's see if I can clear some of this away. Uh, just super dirty water, and I've already done a full rinse like this and took out the dirty water because it was so bad I had to get rid of it. And uh, so anyway, these coins were particularly dirty and greasy and just feeling nasty. And uh, this is again kind of why I do this and I know some people hate it, uh, but all I'm doing is taking coins that have been in, in the circulation forever and just because I'm gonna have to touch them and search through every one of them for their, their date and mint mark, I might as well just, just rinse them off and get all that grease and that grime and years of, of uh, buildup off of them. I am not, by no means scrubbing these and by no means do we think these are numismatic coins that actually have a ton of, uh, a ton of, uh, of value. Uh, they've been in circulation for a long time, much longer than me. So uh, here's, here's that rinse process. I thought you might be interested just to see just how nasty this water is. It is so bad. Um, just uh, just really striking in the white porcelain sink. So there we go, moving on. All right, here we go. The freshly rinsed quarters. Let's pour them all out here onto our towel. And we will spread them out and start letting them dry off evaporate and we'll start sorting them into decade as I do and then we'll get them like I do organized after after we get them into decade we'll get them put into tubes by decade right now um, although I have been doing year um, not mint mark yet but year by uh, for the tw the 30s and the 40s um, just because uh, they, those, that seems to be where most of the um, numismatic coins are. Um, the key dates and the double dies and all that good stuff, the varieties. So while, I'm, while this is drying and, and soaking in, I'm going to go ahead and take these guys and give them a, a little more subtle wash. All right, now we've got those set out nice and degreased all right moving on to the next step all right back with the counts here so I went ahead and uh, laid everything out separated everything by decade and as it relates to the standing Liberty quarters and the barbers I have $12.75 face for the 30s, ten dollars and fifty cents. For the 40s, thirty-two fifty, all the way up there. And then for the the fifties, I have twenty-five dollars and fifty cents. That's how that broke out. Fewer fifties than forties this time. And then typical is uh, all the sixties make up the lion's share of, or at least almost sixty percent of the. Uh, of the uh, of the total here so all together uh counting that out that's a hundred 
and uh, or that's it's, it's 14 140 dimes or 14 uh, sorry 140 face uh, of of quarters so 100 ounces in silver now just for fun because a lot of these uh, standing liberty quarters were dateless I flipped them over on the back to see if there were any type ones and just just as a little test here tell me if you see one All right, if you saw it right there, check it out. That's a that's a Type 1 Standing Liberty quarter. So that's a special one. That's pretty cool. So what's the difference? Just for those who, of you who are not familiar, you'll notice that they all have three stars down underneath the eagle there. And this one right here, where, where did I lose it? This one right here is the eagle's a little lower and doesn't have the three stars. Now I don't know what date it is. So this could be, I forget what it is, a 16 or a 17, but the date is is uh, just not recognizable there. So I don't know necessarily what I got here, but it's either, it's one of those two, because those were the earliest ones. So that's pretty sweet, a free type one standard and liberty quarter found in the bunch, which makes me want to search this set of quarters even more just because they see, it seems like that would have been something that would have normally been pulled out. Um, and then looking at the barbers here, you can just kind of tell like this one's the good one of the bunch, it's nice and thick, where some of these other ones are, are really uh, worn down. But I got a lot of barbers with dates. Uh, now the barbers typically Take, keep their dates a little bit better than the Standing Liberty quarters because they're not uh, in the worn part of the, of, the, of the thing, but still kind of fun to get all of that. So that, that's a nice one. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and check uh, the 40s and the 30s for some of the, the rare ones as well. But uh, I'll probably do that later. I'll probably tube most of these up. And I have something to show you because I did have a couple of little purchases. I should have done an unboxing, but I wanted to wait uh, until I had some quarters to do it. So let's go get get a little uh, a little purchase, and I'll show you that in a second. All right. Since my last video, I had not I had run out of tubes, and uh, so I went ahead and bought a whole another pack of tubes because I had ran out and I was. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, using the, the, some of the older tubes that I had and, uh, and just uh, jamming everything all together. And so I ended up getting more tubes so that I can finish off this quarters project eventually here. And in addition to that, I got, I decided to experiment and purchase these ammo can trays. I've been using cardboard and making my own little special boxes to put quarters and dimed tubes into the ammo can, but I saw these ammo can trays and I'll be darned if they don't just perfectly work. They, they work great on these ones uh, for, let's see, yeah, let's get the video here. They work perfectly, oh, hang on a second. All right, I had pulled the wrong trays out. These trays, they, these, they come to it with a three pack, right? So they come three trays per per uh, um, per pack there and this these bottom trays it turns out work perfectly for the dimes you can get uh four uh, dimes or six dimes in here across uh, tubes of dimes and these guys work perfectly for the quarters check that out look at this so and then they, they end up stacking on each other and in the ammo can perfectly. And so and I end up getting exactly what I want in terms of just a few bit uh, uh, more spaces than is necessary to get the, uh, the uh, 70 tubes in there or um, 
Okay, I'm gonna have to do the math here. I'll put the math on the screen of how many tubes I need in there, but I think it's like 70 tubes that are necessary for uh, getting uh, a full ammo can full of $700 space or 500 ounces. So at any rate, pretty jazz because these these uh, trays worked out really good. They come kind of stacked like this. There's another one that has a fewer d dividers and I use those for the half dollars. And so the ammo can with the half dollars, they have actually three trays, but the quarters and the dimes will stack up a little higher and they only need two trays to accomplish the goal. So I am jazz, guys. This has worked out. They're pretty cheap. So I got myself uh, some extra little accessories for the stacking project, adding to the expense of my, of my stacking bill. But hey, I got tubes, I got trays, and so I'm gonna go ahead and start tubing these up and I'll stack them in the trays and come right back at you. All right, finishing up this video. Looks like I got everything tubed and I went ahead and put the counts if I have an incomplete roll. For example, I only had one SLQ on this, but I managed to finish up a full roll. I have some of my Barber and Standing Liberty Cordy rolls uh, back here. Notice how uh, how the barbers it's this these are these are forty right I got I got forty barbers in this tube it it almost is like one fourth of the tube is gone or one fifth of the tube is gone the standing liberty quarters don't even fill up a roll but if you go into the sixties they're just brimming at the top so that's the difference in wear where the sixties obviously have very little wear uh, before they were taken out of circulation the fifties. You can see how these uh, get close to the top, but not perfect. And then the, th the 40s really kind of show uh, a difference there. And then, yeah, you get down to the 30s and the, uh, the barbers and the Standing Liberty quarters, and it's really a big difference with these barbers. Uh, what I should do, you have to remind me, I did do a video where I weigh the barbers compared to a full tube and just see what the difference in weight is because I kind of suspect the difference won't be too bad. I mean, it'll be, it'll be there, but I suspect that you're kind of wearing down the edges and the high points and that the bulk of the silver is still there, the bulk of the weight, and that maybe a lot of this is, is just air. But I, I would be interested to see in terms of, uh, you know, weighing this on the scale and seeing how much actual silver is there versus these older worn down ones, how much silver is gone. But uh, there you have it. I've got um, all of these guys uh, retubed. A lot of work just to take uh, rolls of quarters and turn them into sorted rolls of quarters. But that's exactly what I did there. I went ahead and put um, the uh, Type 1 SLQ with, uh, with its buddy because that's now two of those for me. And I got some of these low mintage coins that I've sorted out. Um, in terms of the 30s and the 40s, the ones that are that are semi-rare. They're not really key dates, but they, they definitely have a low mintage and and they sell on eBay. So uh, I thought I'd put, and then I got a, just two little proofs that I have, proof uh, quarters that I have found in the mix. So we'll be uh, putting, putting all these away. So put the 30s back with the 30s and I guess I got full tubes of the barbers and the SLQs there. And then, um, yeah, I got the, uh, whoops, let's do some better camera work here. I got the 50s going in there and 60s to fill up these trays. I really like these trays that I found. I, I really just took a wild stab at these trays working or not and uh, indeed they ended up being perfect for the half dollars I have to carve these trays down a little bit uh, take out some of the separators for everything to fit but this this ends up just fitting perfectly because I need 70 $10 tubes to make $700 face $700 face makes 500 and ounces, 500 and one half ounce of silver. So I got a monster box of silver with these two trays uh, filled up here and I, I throw my uh, 
little desiccant box in there. And uh, so I just have about 80 more face to go, $80 face. I'll probably order $100 um, face the next order, and then I'll have enough left over for a, a book of quarters to fill out. And that would finish off the quarters project. So I'm looking forward to doing it really close here to get th getting through this monster project before the end of the year. Uh, unfortunately, the last uh, couple of days, silver has jumped up dramatically, jumped up two bucks. So I ordered these on Cyber Friday and, uh, and now it's uh, two, $220 more for the same amount. So uh, while I still can't believe I'm spending this much just on quarters, I'm spending $30 an ounce when I can buy at $25 for 100, for 100 ounce bars. I just don't want 100 ounce bars right now, right? I'm finishing my uh, quarter project. So I definitely am already paying a bit of a premium uh, on top of that just for these quarters. But there you go, guys, there's the update. I'm gonna put these back in the cans and then hopefully at some point here in the near future, I'll, uh, I'll finish this before the end of the year. All right, guys, take care.